Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network, an online community where health IT professionals can discuss experiences, share ideas, and collaborate with one another on all things health IT. Each week I try to take something from one of our discussions and bring it here to you on the YouTube channel in hopes that I can share some of my knowledge with all of you. On this week's video, I'd like to talk about the US CDI, which is the United States Core Data for Interoperability. And it is something that we've just started to hear more about in the last couple of years, but certainly is going to become more popular as time goes on, since it is being incorporated into quite a few of the rules from a legislative perspective in the US. So let's first take a look at what the US CDI actually is. So it is a standardized set of health data classes and constituent data elements for nationwide interoperable health information exchange. So for those of you that participated in some of the build activities or in some of the requirements gathering for the meaningful use requirements or for the promoting interoperability programs over the years, you may be familiar with the core clinical data set. The USCDI is eventually going to replace the core clinical data set as we move forward with some of the legislative activity in the US. So it is where you're gonna be focusing more of your attention and slowly transitioning off the CCDS. So looking back to the CCDS, the core clinical data set, the US CDI is currently gonna replace the following criteria out of that. Again, eventually over time, it's gonna replace them all. But for right now, legislation has it replacing transitions of care, clinical information reconciliation and incorporation, for medications, med allergies, and problems, the view, download, and transmit to third party, the transmission to public health agencies for electronic case reporting, and the application access all data request. So those used to be determined in the core clinical data set. They're now going to follow the standards that are laid out in the US CDI version one. The US CDI is structured into a couple of different components. There are data classes, which are an aggregate of various data elements by a common theme or use case. And then there's also data elements, which are within those data classes and they represent the smallest item that is actually going to be exchanged. So the way that USCDI is structured is it has these classes and data elements within the classes and then it will define the standard that needs to be used for interoperability when exchanging that data element between parties. So within version one, which is the version that is referenced in all of the recent legislative requirements that have come out in the US, we have 16 different data classes and they cover all sorts of things from allergies to procedures to provenance, immunizations, labs. They don't cover everything, but it is a good start. And version two actually was just released in July of 2021, so just a couple months ago, and it incorporates uh, some additional data classes as well as some additional data elements within classes that already existed. Let's take a look at what the USCDI actually lays out. So I'm going to go through a couple of examples. I'm not going to go through all 16 of them. I will put the link to the actual USCDI website underneath, so if you do want to dive further into any of them or understand a little bit more about what the classes or data elements are, you can certainly do that. But I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples just so we can understand sort of how it's laid out and what it's putting in place with respect to standards. For allergies and intolerances, which of course represent harmful or undesirable physiological responses associated with exposure to a particular substance, within the data class, the USCDI version one data elements are substance for drug class, substance for medication, and the reaction. And what is actually set out here is it indicates, for example, that for the drug class, interoperability standards need to follow the SNOMED CT US edition September 2019 release. For the substance medication data element, it needs to be RX norm, the January 6th, 2020 full release update. So you get an idea of how that's sort of laid out. Let's take a look at another one. For vital signs, it covers a wide variety of data elements. So there is a significant number of data elements that is in the vital signs data class. There are other data classes that have sort of larger numbers, clinical notes being one of them. For vital signs, the data elements are gonna follow the LOINC database version 2.6.7 and the unified code for unit of measures revision 2.1. So just by looking at those data class examples and how they are articulated inside the USCDI standard, it gives you an idea of when you're exchanging data and when you're configuring your environments to exchange data between entities, what code set you need to apply. So the other 
place that this becomes relevant is the USCDI dictates you know what those classes are what needs to be exchanged and what elements in the class are going to be participating in the exchange so you'll want to make sure that for particular reporting requirements whether that be through ONC through CMS through some of your state reporting that you do have those particular elements coded and that they're coded using the appropriate data set as referenced in the USCDI version 1. Some of you that are watching from other countries may be thinking like, oh, this is US specific, it has nothing to do with me. That's actually not entirely true. So one of the things that we need to keep in mind is as entities set regulatory requirements, all of our vendors need to comply with those regulatory requirements. So the US is a massive market and there are a huge number of vendors that want to participate in that space. So they're going to try to be incorporating all of these standards into their products. So it's helpful to know what it is that they're doing, where the standards are from, and to identify whether there's differences that need to happen in your particular country. These data sets, so if you look at Loink and SNOMED, they are international data sets, but some of them do have US specific sort of code versions. SNOMED CT is one of those. So if you want to be prepared to exchange data or you're looking to exchange research data, patients that are traveling their data with US entities, it's good to know sort of what their data set is and whether or not that can actually work if you're embarking upon a project like that. So it's not really in our best interest to ignore what America's up to. Of course, if you're in the US, it is incredibly important that you stay on top of these from an IT and informatics perspective because with these code sets and with these standards that are being incorporated into regulatory requirements, you definitely don't want to fall behind and you don't want to underestimate the amount of work it actually takes to codify an application. So I hope this very brief overview of USCDI was helpful. If you haven't heard the term before, again, I'm going to link to it below. You're going to hear me mention the term fairly frequently in the next several years, I think because it is being incorporated into so many different things, and I'll try to reference it and link back to this video whenever possible. So I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will see you again next time.